Welcome to Martial Arts Today, a program dedicated to the ancient fighting arts of the Orient, designed to give you insights into the history, philosophy, styles, and celebrities of the martial arts. And now, your host, Joe Rebello. Hi, this is Joe Rebello with Martial Arts Today, and we're here at the National Jiu-Jitsu America Convention. You know, this national convention is featuring over 20 different instructors and in 20 different forms of jiu-jitsu in various martial arts. Such luminaries such as Professor Wally J, Professor Sid Akufarath, again, uh, Willie Cahill, uh, Gracie S. Casillas, Ernie Boggs, straight down the line, luminaries and martial arts masters and instructors in all various forms of martial arts. You're in for some incredible seminars, demonstrations, as well as interviews here on Martial Arts Today. Stay tuned for some great martial arts action. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joe Rubello with Martial Arts Today, and we're very honored and privileged to have a true martial arts celebrity with us today. Uh, Professor Wally J, again, member of the Black Belt Magazine Hall of Fame and Jiu-Jitsu legend, as well as the founder of Jiu-Jitsu America. And we're here today for the National Convention, and we're here with truly one of the true luminaries and legends in the martial arts today. First of all, Professor J, it's a pleasure meeting you. My pleasure. Sir, let's start at the very beginning. How did you begin in the martial arts? Well, I began back in 1935 at a moment gym where Ed Parker's family went to church there in Honolulu. But I, I took it for a while, but we didn't have no mats, so we, gradually we faded away, and then I went to college in 38, 39, and 40. And I came back in 1940 after I got married, and I continued. Then I got really serious about it. I found out that it was very important <coughs> in self-defense. I was very tiny then. I was about 115 pounds, you know, and um, at my height of 5'9". And it had much strength, so I had to learn something. But I did a lot of boxing, which helped me a lot. So uh, from there, I, I converted a lot of my moves from jiu-jitsu into judo and, all, and boxing, too. What was the attraction to jiu-jitsu? Well, jiu-jitsu has all different types of fighting. You can grapple and, and standing. There's so many things you can do. There's a variety of things. And jiu-jitsu takes advantage of the guy's energy, using the person instead of, when he uses a lot of strength, I use his moves. And I, 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 I join my energy with his and I control him. Now, again, jiu-jitsu, uh, the gentle art as it were, um, you've created a unique variant on jiu-jitsu, a small circle jiu-jitsu. Would you explain for the general public a little bit about what is small circle jiu-jitsu? When I learned jiu-jitsu, it was all big moves and everything from arm length out. And I cut it down to a smaller size way towards the elbow and everything close to your body. And this way, the moves are done faster because they're shorter and less chance to escape and you can produce more pain because it's close to your body. Like you're holding a weight out. If you hold a weight way out here, it's heavy. When you bring close to your body, it's stronger. You can hold it better. And I found that working on pressure points is so important. I was working on pressure points for many years, but I didn't know what's pressure points. I do trial and error and then certain places hurt. I know it's a weak point. Then I studied under George Dillman about pressure points and I found that these are the pressure points. So the pr pressure points actually is the map of the weakness of the human body. It tells you where the different meridians are and the weaknesses. So I think that uh, the pressure points, together what we learned about you know, psychology, I mean the science of the art, like balance is so important, and mobility, stability, all those things. I made 10 principles out of that. And I found out that through these ex my experiences, I built that up. And I know it works. I know it's a principle, and I based everything on that. When a technique doesn't work, I go back, right back to my principles. Something was lacking in the principle. I mean, I didn't put it in, see? So I gradually evolved. But how I really got started was I had a judo teacher who was Hawaiian champion, Ken Kawachi. He was 135 pounds and about 5 feet 3. He took, he took jiu-jitsu from the same place with us, those who were judo champion. And one day, three professional wrestlers came in. One was one th one 250, 280, and 300 pounds. And he was only 135 pounds. He threw those people all over the place. I said, 
this guy got some magic. I got to learn what that magic is all about. That magic is how you use your wrist, how you use your energy. Tell me, when we talk about the different energy involved in jujitsu, and we mentioned before about judo, um, again, what uh, for the average person is the difference between judo and jujitsu? Well, judo came from jujitsu. The most dangerous thing was taken out to make the game of judo. Dr. Jigoro Kano, founder of judo, created judo because jujitsu was dying off. So judo became a sport, and the most dangerous things were eliminated. Only one, only one thing you can do is the arm bar that can hurt you. But the choking, well, you can revive, see, and get to be a really a scientific sport. And without my, my judo, my jujitsu would be poor. Because judo teaches you reality. When you, once you, like boxing, once you get in the ring, you're alone, you gotta fight. But in uh, a lot of times, self-defense, you have to, you know, hold back a lot or else you have to cooperate with your partner. That's what kata is, mostly cooperate with your partner, see. And uh, it doesn't work in really on the street. You have to be real. Now, that sense of reality you talk about, uh, again, would, would you say you got that through the randori or the free, or the free sparring from judo? Now, you have several tapes out available on the art of small circle jujitsu, and you also have one on the ground techniques as well, as well as the uh, shimewaza or choking techniques. Jujitsu have that. We have the shimewaza, which is choking and ground techniques. And uh, but these are really basic stuff. But my tape one is the most important because the fundamentals are in there. The 10 principles, uh, different holes. But tape three is a very important one. It's a grappling one that Ron Ogie made it. And we'll have tape four is, co is going to be on the market in a few days, or maybe a week or so. And it's uh, effective, I mean, uh, finger techniques. And then one on. On arm bars, on arm bars, I don't do the way to do arm bars. I do. I put on the pressure on the tendon tricep instead on the elbow. And I found out there was a Golgi tendon receptor there that controls and tells the brain to relax. In other words, if you carry something heavy, if you're going to hurt your joint, you let your hand go, or hot, you let it go because it's a warning that Golgi tendon receptor tells the brain and the, through the spinal column to relax. And when you relax put the hole on. And you can't tighten up really once I put it on. And it's something I found that even I did it in Japan, they never knew that. Really? That's fascinating. And you know, that's, that's what is so amazing about your art, is that the fact that it's an art that evolves, that you've taken what many people would say, well, jujitsu is a complete art. Yet, we're always learning, there's always something new to learn, and by keeping that open mind, as you have through your career, you've really evolved the state of jujitsu to another level. Now, again, again, many times I talk to martial artists and they don't want to blow their own horn and talk about their accomplishments, but really, you have had quite a list of accomplishments. Uh, would you tell our audience a little bit about some of the various accomplishments you've had through your illustrious career? I've been in many Hall of Fame. I was in Black Belt Magazine Hall of Fame, 1969, Instructor of the Year, 1990, Man of the Year, and many uh, American Jiu-Jitsu Institute, Hall of Fame, Jiu-Jitsu America, Canadian Canadian Jiu-Jitsu Association, oh, well, loads of them. But it really means nothing if you don't have the goods. I see a lot of people, there's so many Hall of Fame that they're in and mean nothing because I went to one Hall of Fame where I got the top award and after the teacher, I mean, the sponsor asked, he said, anybody didn't get an award? I thought you, I thought you have to earn an award. <laughs> it was a joke, really. Oh my gosh. So Hall of Fame means nothing, all those awards today, really. Even ranks do mean nothing. People want ranks so quick, you know. I turned down my ranks several times. They gave me a seven down in judo. I turned it down because I've been out of it for we uh, years already, you know. But they trying to give it to me before I didn't want it because I don't. F I don't feel it will be fair. There are a lot of people working hard, so hard, and they're trying for it and they can't get it. But I think that the American martial arts have really improved because we cross train. That's a big difference. In traditional style, you have to do what the teacher told you, or you got to train what the founder taught. And if the founder was a little guy that discovered the system and you're a tall guy, it makes a difference. So I think by cross-training, you can learn a lot and you can adjust to yourself. You learn from this part and you try to fit to your body, see? But with 
traditional style, this work that way. You can do exactly what the teacher told you. Though it's wrong. The founder may, may be brilliant, but he has flaws too. He has weaknesses too. Like every system of martial arts has strength and its weaknesses. Every martial art is good, but depends for who. You know, that's such an important point, and I, I feel it's so important, in, especially in, in, in our modern-day martial arts, is that we're tailoring the art to the individual. And again, uh, jiu-jitsu is one of the arts that truly does that, and the diversity of practitioners as well as arts is so important. Now, again, how did you come about, again, we mentioned before about cross-training. That is the uh, theme for the national convention we are here today with Jiu-Jitsu America. Um, how did you come up with that theme? How did you... I advocated that back way back in the 40s when I was taking judo and jiu-jitsu and uh, boxing too. I did that because I felt that only jiu-jitsu wasn't enough. You see, a lot of my moves, you can see the boxing in it, the footwork, because it fits perfect. But because the, the teacher had no training in boxing, he doesn't see it. But I could see it. And uh, I believe that you'd be better if you have more, more uh, martial arts and styles you learn. Because everyone has something that you can use. But like I told Bruce Lee, you don't have to be a black belt in every art to learn everything. Just pick what you want. But first get your black belt in one, one style so you can understand fundamentals. Fantastic. Now. Again, with the cross train, with the aspects, let's talk about the association that you've created, Jiu Jitsu America. How did you come about creating this organization? Well, I used to belong to the American Jiu Jitsu Institute, was the headquarters for the Okazaki system, Kodian Khan system. And I started to change things. And when I got my black belt, I made a lot of changes in the techniques, and they didn't like it. And it, all of my peers were angry at me, but I was using two-way action instead of one-way action. They were all using one-way, I used two-way. So you get energy from two sources of push and pull. And gradually I had to get out because they couldn't see me in an organization doing the same thing. I mean, doing what I'm doing and not like them, see. So I had to get out and form Jiu-Jitsu America. And fortunately, Willie Cahill, you know, was a, a top world judo coach in the United States for 10 years. He got famous after that, but he had the makings, I knew it, see? And he and John Chow Hoon, uh, William Chow's brother, Ed Parker's, Ed Parker's teacher, we got together and, and uh, with Carl Beaver, another guy, a Caucasian guy, and we formed Jiu-Jitsu America. Because we all wanted changes. So I, j I just found the right combination. Everybody wanted to join, agreed with me. And it was hard to get people to agree with you those days. Everybody wanted want to stick to one style. Well, what time frame was this? Well. In 19, the organization, uh, the American Jiu Jitsu Institute, was founded by Professor Okazaki back in 1939. Uh, by 1950, I started to change, 40, I started to change. By, by 50, I moved to the United States from Hawaii. And they didn't like it because they found I was changing things. So I went back to talk to them uh, 17 years later, 1978. I went trying to talk to them, they, you know. Why don't we change and things to make it up to date? They all get angry with me, everybody. Ten of them against me. They said I was not loyal to the professor, I was changed things, you know. I said, well, things have to be changed. You don't fight World War II with World War I, one, one, one weapons, do you? But they couldn't see it. And I said, the Kodian Khan system started in 1920s, 21 to 29, I think. And. Uh, that was a Model T age. You see anybody riding Model T today? Nobody does. You have, you have to you have to update things, you see. And if I update things, and next to another guy, Ed Millar, update, when I'm gone, it, it keeps improving all the time. So you have to do that. But they didn't agree with me, so I had to get out. Well, that's it. You know, it's so encouraging to see that you're, uh, you're encouraging your students to evolve. If they evolve to another level and times change, that they change literally with the times. Now, we're going to be seeing a short demonstration afterwards of small circle jiu-jitsu, and we're really looking forward to it. And again, it's a rare opportunity for you, the audience, to be able to see uh, small circle jiu-jitsu in action. Professor Jay, in closing, what are your future goals for Jiu-Jitsu America and for the state of jiu-jitsu and martial arts? You see, Jiu-Jitsu America, we treat, teach a lot of things that the Kodian Khan Jiu-Jitsu, but is modified. But I found a Jiu-Jitsu organization, organization called Small Circle Jiu-Jitsu International. Ron Ogi, uh, Ed Mila, 
my son Leon are the inheritors. And I expect them to bring it further than what I did. They can't stay the same way because everything improved with time. And I've seen the changes that these young men made already in the art itself. So the more minds in on a certain subject, you get better, more research. And that's why I feel that with these people's expertise, we'll get better. She shouldn't stay the same, she'd be improving all the time. Well, on that note, we'll be back with more action here on Martial Arts Today. Stay tuned. Who's 75 years old, hails from Alameda, California. He's a former Hawaii resident trained under Henry S. Okazaki in uh, Kodekan Jiu Jitsu. We have Professor Wally J. I'm a former Kalei resident, and I, my teacher in Judo is Kenneth Kawachi, who I really want to dedicate this to because he taught me the tricks of how to use the hands, and that's the secret of my success. Kawachi was a 19 and a territorial champion of Hawaii back in I think of 1939 and 40. And you see, I use a lot of techniques. The hands are secret of the techniques, it's not the power. Thank you. Okay, he's gonna be demonstrating with his victim, I mean his son, Leon J. Now this gentleman is 75 years old. An attacker grabs the defender's forearm. Okay, now a bully shove counter with a painful hammer lock. Okay, now the 75 year old professor makes a human pretzel out of his attacker.
the hip throw. This is a deadly throw. The throw has no control of the victim's body to control the fall. A rear body hug attack using a leg screw combination holds.
introduce yourself. My name is John Oschlager, sixth degree black belt, student of Grandmaster Shoto Tanimori in Kokosai Jiu Jitsu Remedo. Now, um, where, now where exactly is your dojo? Long Island, Kings Park, Nakata School of Self Defense. So you've come all the way up from New York for the convention to demonstrate and teach us here. Since Sensei Malau invited me up, I thought it was an honor to share the time with the students and the other great instructors that are here. It's an honor to be on the mat with people like Professor Jay. Well, thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. Yes.